Hello! Today I would like to share my process of selecting an appropriate herbal formula to treat acute respiratory illnesses with Chinese herbal medicine. I will go over some major formulas that address different presentations and discuss an actual case I am treating right now. So let me begin by presenting you with the case and then we will discuss the stages of some acute respiratory illnesses and appropriate herbal strategies to deal with these. The patient for this presentation is an 84 years old man. Unfortunately, he lives in upstate New York and I am in New York City, so we had to rely on talking over the phone to learn about his medical history and diagnosis. According to our conversation, six days prior he tested positive for COVID-19. When I spoke to him, his primary symptoms were shortness of breath, somewhat productive cough with thin, clear white sputum, runny nose, severe chills that could not be relieved by warm clothing, extreme lack of energy and body aches. He had no perspiration. Additionally, he felt nauseous and had a lack of appetite. Before the infection, he was in good health and had no morbidities and took no medications. Let's take a look at the picture of his tongue. The tongue has a slightly thin white coating. The body looks somewhat dry, but the coating is not peeled, so we should not worry about yin deficiency. Both sides of the tongue are slightly elevated, indicating uh, liver chi stagnation. A deep crease in the center of the tongue indicates weak stomach yin. The tip of the tongue is thin and pale, and that's a sign of heart chi deficiency. The body of the tongue is blue and slightly pale, pointing in the direction of cold and blood stagnation. To treat an acute respiratory illness, we are primarily interested in the nature of the pathogenic influence as well as the status of defensive Wei and nutritive Ying Qi. We can disregard constitutional issues such as liver Qi stagnation, stomach Yin or heart Qi deficiency. So let's go over the symptoms and come up with a diagnosis for this patient. You probably know that we pay close attention to the stages of development of the patient's symptoms and changes in vital signs because an accurate differential diagnosis is crucial for a good result. First, we must determine the location of the pathogen. Next, we must determine the pathogen's nature and temperature. We must evaluate whether the pathology is external or internal, excess or deficiency, hot or cold. In the case of our patient, this is an acute onset of external pathogenic factor. He is feeling cold all the time, so the nature of the pathogen is cold. The runny nose indicates the presence of external wind, so this is a wind cold where the cold is predominant. He cannot get warm even if he uses many blankets, which is an excess condition. However, he has no energy, so we should suspect an underlying Qi deficiency. Next, let us talk about the vector of the pathogenic process. Typically, a wind-cold pathogen enters the body through the yang meridians on the head. There are three major stages of the disease caused by an external pathogenic influence. Tai Yang, Yang Ming, and Xiao Yang. Tai Yang presents with a cold pathogenic factor. Yang Ming presents with a warm pathogenic factor. And Xiao Yang presents with a pathogenic factor that changes from hot to cold and from cold to hot. We are primarily interested in the Tai Yang and Yang Ming stages, as well as Tai Yang and Yang Ming channels on the head. When the pathogen enters through the Tai Yang bladder channel at bladder one point, 
The symptoms would be headaches and pain in the eyes because the bladder channel travels from the eye to the forehead and then to the nape of the neck. That's Taiyang involvement. However, the pathogen can also enter or transfer from the Taiyang to Yangming stomach meridian at stomach one point. This point is also located on the infraorbital ridge, so the symptoms primarily involve the eyes, tearing and redness of the eyes. There could also be some symptoms associated with headaches, typically on both sides of the head. If the headache is predominantly on one side of the head, this is a sign of Xiaoyang type of headache. The Taiyang type of headache is primarily on the top of the head and the back of the head. The Yangming type of headache manifests on the forehead. When the pathogen transfers to the Yangming large intestine channel at the large intestine 20 point, the patient will have symptoms of runny nose, sneezing and possibly loss of smell. Of course, wind cold invades more than one channel on the head more often than not and precision is necessary only when we deal with acupuncture. Acupuncturists have to determine exactly what channel is involved. However, herbal formulas will attack more than one channel at once. In the initial stage of wind cold presentation, where sinus headaches and runny nose are the chief symptoms, Tsang Erdzi Sun Xanthium Powder is the ruling formula. The lung opens into the nose. Since cold is heavy, its natural tendency is to descend. It wants to penetrate through the nasopharynx into the throat and from the throat into the lungs. The throat is a natural barrier, a bottleneck that prevents the pathogen from attacking the lung. How do we know the pathogen is at the throat? That's when a scratchy throat becomes the primary symptom. Xiang Su San Seperis and Perilla leaf powder is a ruling formula for such presentation. If the pathogen is strong and the defensive qi is strong, the body cannot push the pathogen back out and the pathogen cannot get deeper. Defensive qi and pathogenic qi struggle against each other. Qi and fluids in the body stagnate in the throat region and the process transforms into heat. As heat builds up, it turns into fire toxins. Clinical presentation of fire toxins attacking the throat is fever sore throat and swollen lymph nodes in the neck region. Yin Chiao San Lanicera and Forsythia formula is appropriate at this stage. Let's make a distinction. When the patient has chills and scratchy throat, we use Xiang Su San Cyperis and Perilla leaf powder. But when the throat becomes sore and the patient develops a fever, we use Yin Chiao San, Lanicera and Forsythia powder to clear fire toxins. However, the pathogen can penetrate through the throat barrier and enter directly into the lung in some cases. This scenario is especially characteristic for people who have pre-existing qi deficiency. In this case, the pathogen does not change its cold nature and enters directly into the lung. Cold causes stagnation of qi and fluids in the lungs. Stagnation results in symptoms of cough and wheezing. Water retention in the chest causes stifling sensation and the inability uh, to take a deep breath, especially when lying down. The patient would experience aversion to cold and absence of sweat. They will have profuse watery sputum heaviness and body aches. The ruling formula for this presentation is Xiao Qing Long Tang, minor blue-green dragon decoction. Uh, this is a Han Dynasty formula from the Shang Han Lun, the treatise on the cold damage. As you can see, my patient has many of these symptoms. 
So I prescribed this formula to him with some modifications. Xiao Qing Long Tang consists of the following ingredients. Ma Huang Herb of Ephedra 9 grams, Guizhe Ramulus Cinnamony 9 grams, Xi Xin Radix and Rhizoma Azari 6 grams, Gan Jiang Rhizoma Zingiberis 9 grams, Ban Xia Rhizoma Pinellia Preparatum 9 grams, Bai Shao Radix Peonia Alba 9 grams, Wu Weizhe Fructus Shizandra chinensis, 6 grams, and Zhi Gan Cao, honey fried licorice root, 9 grams. Let us analyze individual herbs and their purpose in this formula. So we have Ma Huang Ephedra herb, which is warm, acrid, and slightly bitter. It enters lung and urinary bladder channels. Its primary function is to release wind cold and stimulate sweating and we only prescribe it in cases of wind excess wind cold condition patterns where chills and fever and headache are present in absence of sweating the patient may also have body aches and nasal congestion another important function of Ma Huang is that it circulates lung qi and stops wheezing. So it treats wheezing, cough, and uh, painful breathing due to wind cold invasion. However, we can also use this herb to move stagnant fluids due to uh, yang stagnation. Because this herb stimulates urination and uh, induces perspiration, sweating, to reduce edema. And also, uh, ephedra is a good analgesic herb in case of body aches. It treats wind, damp, cold bee syndrome. And uh, there is another less uh, common function of this herb. It treats yin type of boils. A yin type is a concave boils that go in instead of out. Those are convex. And this is yin type of uh, boils uh, are considered deficiency type of boils. Unfortunately, however, Ma Huang is not available everywhere over the counter. In New York State, the only way you can get access to this herb is through an herbal dispensary. A professional herbalist would have to write you a prescription. One safe alternative to Ma Huang is Bai Tian. This is a warm and acrid sweet herb that enters the lung channel. It anchors rebellious lung qi, dissolves phlegm, stops cough and wheezing. A great and safe substitution to Ma Huang. The second herb in this formula is Guizhe, um, cinnamon tree branches. This herb is warm, acrid, sweet, and it enters lung, bladder, and heart channels. It also releases exterior but it also harmonizes the yin, nutritive and wei, protective levels. And that's important when exterior cold comes with underlying deficiency patterns, where sweating does not bring improvement. Guizhi also warms and opens channels and disperses cold, and also can be used just like Ma Huang for wind damp cold B syndrome. And so, uh, first two herbs are very uh, good for treating acute bee syndrome due to wind cold. It also opens up and frees the yang in the chest. And we can use it for edema and painful urination due to cold obstruction and insufficient yang qi. We can also use it uh, in cases when phlegm obstructs the normal flow of qi in the chest and causes palpitations, dizziness and chest oppression. Hence, it opens into the heart channel. And we can use it for my, uh, myocardial infarctions and angina pectoris. And finally, we can also use this herb in gynecological conditions because it warms and opens into the uh, Zhen conception and Chong penetrating vessels. 
So these are vessels that belong to the third level of energy, which is constitutional, Yuan. So we have Wei defensive, Yin nutritive, and Yuan constitutional level of energy. And so Wujia actually accesses constitutional level of energy, and it unblocks stagnation in the Ren and Chong Mai to treat amenorrhea, absence of menstruation, uh, dysmenorrhea, painful menstruation, and irregular menstruation. So this uh, all due to cold obstructing the blood in the uterus. And so this is a very important herb that we use for women with irregular menstruation and especially in cases of infertility. And so we have Mahuang and Guiji, they are both chief herbs in this formula. Both of these herbs have acrid and warm nature. They dispel exterior wind cold by promoting perspiration. And that's how our body expels exterior conditions. We sweat them out. We can also sneeze them out, right? So Mahuang ephedra also circulates lung qi to relieve cough and stop wheezing. It treats dyspnea, painful breathing, and wheezing. This herb is of choice for acute body aches because it warms up the body and circulates qi. But of course, Guiji is also a great herb for that purposes. The third herb in this formula is Xi Xin, wild Chinese ginger, a warm, acrid herb that enters the lung and kidney channels. It releases exterior wind cold um, and treats common cold presenting with headache, severe body aches. Yet another herb, herb that treats body aches. And of course, this herb is also predominantly used for an excess type of wind cold when where perspiration is not present. Um, Shishin also warms the lungs and dissolves phlegm. So we can use it for productive cough with dyspnea, wheezing and chest depression uh, when um, the patient presents with clear and white sputum. Shishin also unblocks the nose and treats nasal congestion. It alleviates pain and can be used to treat headache and also arthritis and abdominal pain due to wind, cold, dampness. Another less common application of this herb is for oral ulcers and toothaches. I personally use this herb to help pe people after the um, dental implant surgery because in the initial stages after the surgery this herb is very helpful to heal mouth ulcers. Okay, the next herb in our formula is Ganjiang, dried ginger root, an acrid and hot herb that enters the lung, spleen, stomach and heart channels. For our purposes, we are interested in this herb because it warms the lung and reduces phlegm. It used to treat dampness, cold and phlegm accumulation in the lungs leading to wheezing, cough, aversion to cold and watery sputum. It also warms the center, meaning stomach, and expels cold for chest and abdominal pain, distension, vomiting and diarrhea due to interior cold blocking the middle. That is a form of food, food poisoning pretty much or stomach virus. It also restores yang uh, and it treats cold limbs and extreme weakness associated with devastated yang. And typically we combine uh, gandiang with another herb, it's called fudze, aconite, aconite preparatum that is. Gandiang also unblocks the channels and stops bleeding. It uses, uh, we use it to treat bleeding of dark thin, thin blood due to cold obstructing the channels also uh, a gynecological application of this herb. Yet another warm and acrid herb in this formula is Ban Xia. It's actually uh, a cooked herb uh, because in raw form it's toxic. However, we, when, when it's processed with ginger juice, uh, it becomes um, absolutely benign and we, traditionally we add this uh, flavor toxic. But just like I said, this herb is routinely prescribed to the pregnant women with absolutely no any adverse side effects. 
Bansia means half summer. It's an acrid, toxic, warm herb that enters the lung, spleen, and stomach channels. And primarily this herb dries dampness and dissolves phlegm. That is for stagnant fluids in the chest region. And it's, it treats coughing with copious sputum, chest oppression, and also treats vertigo, vertigo, nausea, and vomiting. Vertigo is another manifestation of phlegm obstruction. Banchia also has an effect on the stomach chi. It directs it downward. Just like I said, it treats nausea and vomiting due to stomach obstruction by phlegm. And once again, the processed herb is safe to be used during pregnancy uh, for nausea. And of course, we want to make sure that uh, the presentation is primarily cold, that is, tongue doesn't have any red spots and the pulse is not rapid. Then Banchia it would be an appropriate herb to use, let's say, for nausea due to morning sickness. Banchia also shrinks, shrinks nodules and unblocks phlegm stagnation. For plumpy chi, um, that is a um, sensation of um, something stuck in the throat, goiter, uh, scrofula, and chest oppression, so neck uh, nodules and chest oppression. But generally speaking, Bangxia can treat phlegm stagnation anywhere in the body. And whenever we use a lots of warm and acrid herbs, we want to ensure that yin is protected because acrid, warm herbs disperse fluids which are part of yin. In other words, yang consumes yin. Therefore, we must use astringent and sour flavor herbs to balance the dispersing quality of acrid and warm herbs. And so the next herb in our formula is Bai Shao, white peony root, uh, a bitter sour herb that is cool and it enters the spleen and the liver channels. And in this formula we use it to harmonize the yin and the way levels of energy, protective and, and nutritive levels. And so we use it uh, to treat unresolved external pathogenic factors with interior deficiencies where sweating does not relieve the pathogen. Bai Shao also tonifies liver blood and regulates menstruation. And we use it for chronic deficiencies of the Ren conception and Chong penetrating vessels, which lead to infertility and irregular menstruation. Remember, Guizhi treats irregular menstruation due to cold obstructing the uterus, and Bai Shao treats irregular menstruation due to blood deficiency. There is a big distinction, however, those two herbs can be combined to treat both. Anyways, um, Bai Shao also tonifies blood and extinguishes wind. That's connection with the liver channel. And we treat spasms, tremors, twitches, numbness and seizures. Because in Chinese medicine, neurological symptoms are closely related to the liver. And also, Bai Shao nourishes liver yin and anchors liver yang to treat headaches, migraines, irritability, flushed face uh, and vertigo. And we also treat spasms due to liver blood deficiency. In elder people, uh, elder people often experience leg cramps at night due to blood deficiency and this is a great herb to address the symptom. And the ruling formula for that is Shao Yao Gan Sao Tang, by the way. Now, some of you may be familiar with another formula from Shang Han Lun, that is Gui Ji Tang, the cinnamon branches decoction. The whole intrigue of that formula is a combination of Gui Ji and Bai Shao. These two herbs harmonize the yin, nutritive and the whey protective levels of qi. Guizhetang is a formula of choice when a wind-cold condition presents with an underlying deficiency and when a chronic sweat does not release the pathogenic factor. So, you can see that Xiao Qinglong Tang formula 
uses potent herbs that expel wind cold excess from the lungs and at the same time it hides a second strategy to harmonize the chi of the nutritive and protective levels. Okay, the next herb is Wu Weizhe, five flavor fruit, a sour warm herb uh, that enters the lung, heart and kidney channel. Wu Weizhe is Shizandra and this herb in this formula is primarily used to hold leaking lung chi and stop coughing. For chronic cough, uh, painful cough, uh, asthma, and it also can be used for cough where, where lung and kidney are not communicating. Another important function of this herb is that it stops sweating and replenishes fluids. Remember that fluids is the medium that we need to expel exterior pathogenic factor. However, and lack of, and lack of fluids can be detrimental uh, for, for resolution of the, of the symptoms. And so Wu Weizhe replenishes fluids, but it also treats spontaneous daytime or nighttime sweating. And the difference is nighttime sweating is typically associated with kidney yin deficiency and spontaneous sweating is associated with spleen chi deficiency. And Wu Weizhe treats both. And it also treats extreme thirst and dry throat. It tonifies kidneys, secures essence and stops diarrhea. And the type of diarrhea that it treats is called cock crow diarrhea. That is a daybreak diarrhea, which is again uh, the sign of kidney yang, yang and spleen yang deficiency when a person wakes up early in the morning when the kidney channel is the weakest and goes to the bathroom and has uh, a stool with undigested food. Wuweidze also has calming properties and some would say even hypnotic properties uh, because it calms shen and nourishes the heart and we can use it for dream disturbed sleep, palpitations, anxiety, irritability and insomnia due to yin and blood deficiencies. In our formula, Wuweidze helps to contain the lung chi and stop cough and wheezing. It also stops spontaneous sweating, an interesting feature of this formula. Xiao Qing Long Tang uses many herbs that promote sweating and at the same time it uses an herb that astringes and stops sweating. Many other classical formulas select herbs with these seemingly opposite functions and action vectors. Xiao Qing Long Tang uses many acrid herbs to open up the pores and release pathogen with sweat. Wu Weizhe, on the other hand, moderates this action and preserves qi from escaping with sweat. Finally, Zhi Gan Cao, honey fried licorice, is a sweet warm herb that enters all 12 channels. That's the final herb in this formula. Zhi is a honey fried preparation of Gan Cao licorice root. It has a stronger effect than Gan Cao to boost the middle and augment the heart and spleen qi. So it's a tonic herb. Ji Gan Cao also moistens the lung, stops cough and harmonizes properties of other herbs. For my patient, I had to modify this formula slightly. First of all, I used only 6 grams of Ma Huang because my patient is 84 and I wanted to make sure ephedra would not challenge his heart. And since cough was a significant symptom, I added to this formula 9 grams of Xingren apricot seeds to stop cough and wheezing and 9 grams of Zi Su Zi purple perilla fruit, an acrid and warm herb that treats cough and wheezing and also reduces phlegm. Finally, I added 6 grams of aged tangerine peels, Chen Pi, to assist Ban Xia and Zi Su Zi to transform phlegm. In classical Chinese medicine, we have a rule. To transform phlegm, we must boost the spleen and regulate qi. Zhi Gan Cao gives the spleen a boost. Chen Pi regulates qi. That's why I added it to the formula. 
I gave my patient seven bags of the formula for seven days. In my experience, COVID is a tricky condition and I would expect my patient to be better in seven days, but not completely cured. There is a good possibility we will need to follow up with a lighter formula to clear up the remaining pathogenic factor or he may require additional herbal treatments to nourish qi. I will call him tomorrow to see how he is doing. Finally, I wanted to say to you uh, that you should not despair if you do not have access to Xiao Qing Long Tang formula but want to use a pre-made formula because ephedra is a limiting factor. I've seen some producers on the internet offer Xiao Qing Long Tang but it does not have ephedra and I would not be expecting it to have same therapeutic effect as the formula I described to you. So you have to read the ingredients of the formula very carefully before you buy it. However, there is a safe alternative to Xiao Qing Long Tang and it's called Xiang Su San. It's a safe and readily available alternative to Xiao Qing Long Tang. It releases exterior wind cold invasion and moves qi stagnation in the chest and hypochondriac region. A typical presentation for Xiang Su San is fever and chills, absence of sweat, headaches, stifling sensation in the chest and hypochondriac region, and low appetite. The tongue has a thin white coat and the pulse is floating, especially on the tongue position. As you can see, the symptoms are very close to the symptoms of Xiao Qing Long Tongue formula. Well, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I have been your host, Andrey Yershov. If you are interested in learning more about formulas I spoke about, please follow me. If you are interested in learning more about the formulas I spoke about, please follow the link in the description. Chinese herbal medicine works well to relieve symptoms of any viral, viral seasonal pathogenic factor, so it would be wise to have a supply of some herbal formulas for emergency use in your cupboard just in case. I believe it is a good practice to start taking an appropriate herbal formula as soon as you feel under the weather. But you have to know exactly what formula is right for you. I hope this presentation will help you to make the right choices if you or your loved ones are in need of help. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.